Anyway, um, <laughs> non-exclusion timeout, often referred to, or sometimes referred to, or maybe not commonly referred to, but sometimes, and anyway, you get the idea, non-exclusionary timeout. really depends on who's writing the term. Non-exclusionary timeout is specifically used when you're trying to use a timeout procedure in a classroom or a group setting, right? And you need to make sure that the reinforcers are not delivered for this person because they're in timeout, and but you can't really remove them from the scenario without disrupting too much. A classroom is a common scenario here. Uh, so you can do things like saying, hey, little Billy got out of line, so little Billy, you're in timeout, but you need to get in your seat. In other words, I'm not gonna call on you or give you any attention for the next X number of minutes. To make it easier on the behavior manager, you can use one of these blue little rubbers, all right? So just put this on the child, like so, all right, see that thing? It's a little tight on me, but I don't know why I slipped into an accent, I apologize. Um, so it's a little tight on me, but the teacher would know that little Billy is in timeout as long as that thing is on. So she, he, or whatever is not going to call on little Billy uh, when, he's when he's in his non-exclusionary timeout. Um, the idea being that timeout, when it's an exclusion process, some people get a little weird about the fact that you're taking this kiddo out of a natural environment, you're, you're excluding them from normal things. So you can use timeout, which really is a shortened version of what it really means is timeout from reinforcement, right? So, uh, so, time, so you can use timeout from reinforcement in a setting where people are without excluding them by, by signaling um, that, time, that reinforcers are not available for a certain period of time.